In this video, I just want to share my workflow for streaming and recording videos for teaching using OBS Studio. Uh, this is a free and open source application for video recording and live streaming that's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It provides high performance, real time video and audio capturing and mixing. You can use it to create scenes from multiple sources, windows on your screen, camera feed, images and more. OBS is used by the streaming community all over the internet and YouTube is full of tutorial videos on how to use it in its various situations. So I will only give a very brief overview on how I use it. The essential scenes that I use often are these. A virtual background like a fancy bookshelf with eye level camera feed overlaid and a chroma key filter with green screen. A full computer display with the camera overlay in the corner. In all cases, when I mention the camera overlay, I can turn it off and on as needed. For example, here on and off. Third, a window source from the slideshow application, which I'm using right here with my camera overlay. Or a window source of my browser where I will be showing a web based document with my camera on top. For example, here you're seeing my browser and I can turn the camera on and off. Back to the slides. Number five is a window source um, of the QuickTime application with my iPad feed so that I can have handwritten annotations or drawings for some explanation. These are the five uh, typical scenes that I use and I'm going to show you how to create these scenes. The first is this fancy bookshelf virtual background. You can choose a uh, background from a website like Unsplash and there are other websites that have um, no royalty photographs that you can use. And I'm going to, it's uh, an empty, uh, ready to start uh, OBS. And I'm going to begin by adding a scene. This scene is going to contain my virtual background. I'm going to call it books. And I'm going to now add a source. This source to this scene will be an image. I am going to call it bookshelf and OK. And then I'm going to browse and choose the image. I've already saved on my desktop a folder for OBS with some sources that I want to use. And I've uh, chosen bookcase medium here as the background that I want to use. Click OK. And there is my background. Um, uh, of course, this uh, image is bigger than the canvas of OBS and I can adjust as I want to uh, show more or less of the photograph in the background. Now I need to add another source, my camera feed. That is going to be a video capture device. Let's call it FaceTime for the FaceTime camera of my laptop. And I'm going to choose the device the FaceTime camera. There it is. That is showing my live feed now um, where I am. You see I have a green screen background with some lights and I am going to now add a filter plus sign here to select the filter and it's a chroma key filter. I'm not going to bother with the name and let's see we can change a little bit this setting to make sure that the edges don't have the green bleed but also you know you have to click to get it just right if i go too much of course my uh, own camera feed uh, camera image disappears so i have to um, experiment with that and now you can see that my camera so you see this is uh, actually i went overboard so my uh, my um my own image is uh, transparent with respect to uh, and it's showing the books in the back. So I'm going to have to click on filter again and um, I'm going to go on the properties and take this down a little bit more there and let's go back. Now it seems that my um, 
uh, image is correct. So I am going to, as you can see, you can have uh, these, these areas of the camera capture that I don't want. So I'm going to select Option and then click on that uh, little button there on the edge of the camera fee and drag it. You see there's a tiny little red button there. Uh, you will see it on your own um, software when you try. Option and drag that to crop the camera feed. And there it is, my uh, camera feed overlaid on a nice virtual bookshelf, fancy bookshelf. Um, of course, I don't have that as many books. Now I'm going to create another scene. Um, let's create another scene here. I'm going to call it slides. Um, no, I'm going to call it uh, keynote. Now I use the keynote application for slides. Okay, so now I have no sources on this new scene. I have to add a source and I will add a window capture. Okay, and this I'm going to call slides. Um, and I'm going to select now the window that I want to capture. And that window is going to be my keynote application that has opened the slides I was using earlier. And there it is. Thus, those are my slides. Now, the slide size is much bigger than my canvas size on OBS. So I'm dragging this in the corner to make this the, the, this um, the size of the source smaller and smaller. And I guess I have to go overboard a little bit to see what the edge is and then adjust it. I've already set it to the same aspect ratio. So there it matches. Now I'm going to add my camera feed here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to books and select the camera feed that I had before. Right click on that and select copy. Then I'm going to go to the other scene, Keynote, and I'm going to tap here and right click to paste as reference. And there is the camera feed on top of the slides. But if you're giving a slideshow presentation, you would probably want to have a smaller size version of yourself being shown on maybe the corner down here of the slides. That is um, uh, quite a common pattern. Maybe I will make it a little bit larger there. Now with that, you can go back here to the FaceTime um, source and turn it off and turn it back on as you need live while making a video or while streaming. I use an external device called a Stream Deck that allows me to set uh, some actions on a, like a switcher, a little um, button switcher to uh, have more easy as access to that to that action there turning the camera on and off there are um, two types of scenes i guess i'm looking at my slides here and i see that i had another scene which is to another type of scene which is to share my uh, full display and i could do that by adding here display I uh, call it display maybe and now I'm going to set the source and here display cap dis display capture and if I had an external display I uh, would have other options there but this is showing now my full display which of course looks a little bit weird because I am uh, already showing you OBS and it's going to be like an infinite um, recursive their image of my display but of course if I go to, to, to if I show something different of my display you will see that uh, now in the recording so let me go back to OBS I'm going to add another type of scene I'm going to call that browser click OK and for this browser, I'm going to choose a source that is a window capture. And I'm just going to leave it there, not bother with the name. And I'm going to pick, in this case, Chrome, where I have open the OBS page. Again, I have to adjust the size because the size of my monitor screen, the site that, that I'm watching here is much 
larger than the video size that I've chosen uh, for OBS. And so for that reason, it doesn't quite doesn't quite match. Um, if I go right, so this is the size of the window that I have open on my computer with the OBS website on Chrome. Let me go back to the slide here uh, to to see what else. Okay, so the window source with QuickTime will work very similarly. I will add a separate uh, scene. I call it maybe iPad, and then I will add as a source a QuickTime as an application as a window capture. And then on QuickTime, if I connect my iPad to Quick to to the computer via cable on QuickTime, I can select record. Um, uh, make new recording, file new recording, and select the iPad as the source um, of the video to make a recording. And that's how I get the iPad into QuickTime and then capture the QuickTime window on OBS. Maybe there's a better way to do it. That's that's the way I do it. And that is a quick rundown of how to create the, the scenes that I very regularly use. So we haven't added any audio source. So let me go back to books, my first scene that I created, and let me add a new source. And that is going to be an audio input device. I'm just going to call it mic for my microphone. I have here an external microphone, a con nice condenser microphone from Sudotac. And I'm going to now choose the device here. Uh, and this enters for some reason with just microphone as the option in the um, in the system here. And there it is. There's the microphone. I can see here as I speak that it the, the, the levels are good. I'm not going into the red. I could adjust this if I wanted to. And now what I'm going to do, because I want the same audio uh, on every scene, if I want to do a video or a live stream where I'm moving from one scene to the other, it'll always be the same microphone source. I'm going to select this microphone and right click or um, tap with two fingers on my tab in case you're using Mac and copy that. Then I'm going to go to the keynote scene and right click again, paste as reference. There you see that the audio mixer is showing me that the source, the audio so source has appeared. I'm going to go to display again and I uh, right click and paste as reference. Now we have the audio source here. I'm going to go to browser and then right click and paste as reference. I notice here that I don't have my camera feed. I would uh, again uh, add the camera feed from the original. I think this one is probably the good one to add. Right click on here, copy. Do we have the camera in the, here the display? No, this one doesn't have it. So I'm going to add it here, paste as reference and the browser also paste as reference. And we have the ability to turn the camera on and off um, as needed for the presentation. And now all my scenes have audio. This scene here is uh, confusing. It was just left over from my initials um, empty start. So I'm going to delete it. So now we have the scenes, books, keynotes with my slides and display with a full display browser with just the browser where I can go and show maybe a website or show some um, maybe a Jupyter notebook that I have open there uh, on my local machine or on um, a remote server. And those are, let me go back to books. That's usually the one I start with or end. So if I start Zoom and in Zoom, I start a new meeting here. Uh, well, you already you see that I already have it set to um, this is just a meeting with myself. I'm starting here. I've already have it set so that OBS virtual camera is my camera. If I go back to FaceTime video, this is going to show my full video source with my green screen. But I have it set with OBS virtual camera as one of the options. And the OBS virtual camera is the output of OBS, which I can send to Zoom with this button here that says start virtual camera. Once I say start virtual camera, if I go back to Zoom now, you will see that my um, camera feed on Zoom is, is, is the same as the output from uh, OVS. <laughs> That's uh, um, how I, I, one can get. In fact, if I want to do a 
video presentation in OBS, I can go to Keynote, have my presentation ready, and then on Zoom, uh, the Zoom uh, meeting here is outside of my recording area with QuickTime, there it is. Uh, that would be a way that I could be using this live on a Zoom call, uh, not sharing the screen, but just using the OBS output as the camera feed to Zoom. And that's another trick. Then I have to go back to OBS, stop virtual camera, and in Zoom probably end the meeting. And, or the other way around. And I always say goodbye <laughs> with my books. Something has uh, uh, changed here since the last time I was here. So let me re, uh, readjust uh, its option. Yeah, there it is. Fix it. That's a different bookshelf, fancy bookshelf. Okay.